While sailing around the world for the last five years, our scariest moments weren't anywhere near water at all. Ironically, they were on land. Stay tuned for a story you've never heard before. I put the car in drive. I heard Kate scream. And one you have. And Kate had a terrible accident. One of my wrists are broken. Is it that one's broken? In 2017, during our first visit to Australia, we decided to take the kids on a road trip. So we rented a, a van. These vans are pretty low to the ground. They're not four wheel drive and they have really high back seats in them. They're kind of tall vans. They have high back seats, double sliding doors. And so we, we got the van, we put our Yeti cooler in the back, we packed it up with stuff and we just started out because I always wanted to see the outback of Australia. And so we headed out Australia, we went down south by Victoria and then out to Adelaide and then up to uh, Alice Springs. And then we went north and we cut back across uh, a dirt road out there, it was a highway, but it was like 700, 800 kilometer dirt road. And the flies out there in the outback were just everywhere. I mean, just flies everywhere. So on probably the third to fourth last day we were on the trip, we had uh, stopped to eat lunch. What are you doing there, Captain? Making a sandwich. Sandwich. So we pulled off on some random dirt road here in the outback. It's dry, it's hot. Yeah, five to the uh, fifth would be. Kate just got done in the ladies' room. It's trash. <laughs> yeah, we need to find a bed. And everybody had to use the bathroom. So we, we pull over and I get out, Renee gets out, the kids get out, they slide their doors open. And, and at this time, Finn and Kate were little, they were real small. And I couldn't see them in the back seat, could not see the back of them. I could see Finn, uh, Jack and Anna in the, in, the, in the middle seat, but I couldn't see them because they were too little and the seats were too tall. So we all got out and we all used the bathroom and, and we got the back open and Renee's making sandwiches and she's making, she's making the sandwiches and the flies are everywhere. And we're all in a hurry and we jump back in the van. Jack gets in. Anna gets in on her side and they slam the sliding doors. Renee sitting beside me. And I just assume that Finn and Kate are in the car. So I like privacy. So I went in front of the car this time and it's a big car. Like you can't really see over it. If you're in the driver's seat, you can't see like what's right in front of you. I was using the toilet in front of the car and the, the rest of my siblings were in the car. I put the car in drive and I accelerate on the, I hit the accelerator, the gas pedal. When Keith put the car in drive, I felt a thump and then immediately I heard, um, and Keith was, we we're in Australia, so he was sitting on the, the wrong side of the car driving. So I'm in the passenger seat, but in the console, I heard Kate scream. And I hear a clunk, clunk and screaming and my kids are screaming at me. And we realize Kate's not in the car. And we hear the screaming coming from down under the car and the, and the, the lump of driving over something. I don't know, I like put my hands, it started pushing me forward, so I just like tried stopping it, but that, that wasn't gonna work. Anyways, I ended up laying flat on the ground until it went over my head. I was right in the middle of, of kicking my flip-flops off because I would just gotten in and shut the door. So I had one flip-flop off and I was getting a snack. And I remember as soon as I heard that scream, I threw the snack, I don't even know where it went, and I jumped out and I had one shoe on and I immediately squatted down to look under the van and I I was scared to death of what I was gonna see. I'm stone white and I'm cussing, I'm saying, oh crap, oh crap, lots of other choice words are coming out of my mouth. And I get out of the car and I knew I'm gonna see, I, I thought I was gonna see my dead daughter that I just ran over and killed. I walk around the car, Renee gets out of the car, we're looking under the car. She was laying down on her stomach and her head was down um, but it was turned, she was looking at me and and she wasn't really crying. I think she was just more scared of what had just happened. And we're saying, come on, come on, get out. We're, we're trying to pull her out. We don't want to break any more bones. I don't know what's tore up. I don't know what's messed up on her. I didn't feel any pain really. Like there were, it was, I had so much adrenaline so I didn't really feel anything. But the car, what ended up happening was the tire went over my hand and ripped my fingernail off. And I thought all my bones were crushed in my hand. I was like, oh, hospital. How are we gonna do that? We're way out here in the middle of Australia. But it turns out that no bones were crushed and only my fingernail got ripped off. There was a bunch of cuts though. My hand was really swollen. We get her out and all we can see is a little blood on her fingers and, and on her arm here. I was offline, but in the process I was, I had no shorts or underwear on. So I was just laying on this hot ground with like, nothing but my shirt and yeah 
Anyways, so whenever I got out, I was just looking for my pants and my underwear. I was just like, where is my pants and where is my underwear? And then mom came over just randomly. She just hugged me for like, she said it felt like a long time, but it was only like 10 seconds. The reality of it is that all it did was pull a fingernail off. The car ran over this part of her arm. It ran totally over that part of her arm. And uh, she had basically squatted down in front of the car, in front of the van, with her butt to the bumper. And she was looking out away. And I couldn't, in that car, I could not see down. It was too high up. You couldn't see down in front of the car. And uh, thankfully, that's the way she positioned herself. Because when I hit her, the bumper hit her butt and it pushed her forward like this and her hands went flat. And the car rolled right over the top of her and the tire rolled over her arm and her wrist. If she'd have been the other way around, it would have pushed her knees up on her and it would have squashed her like a bug because there just wasn't that much clearance. We're just so thankful that that she was okay, that she wasn't bigger or that it wasn't one of the other kids because if one of the other kids had gotten under there, there's no way that car would have, would have cleared uh, them. There's just no way. They were too big, too tall. It totally totally woke me up and, and, and made me just realize I need to slow down. I need to, I need to focus on what I'm doing and not be so self-centered and selfish. Kate knows now not to go to the bathroom in front of a vehicle ever. I think we've reiterated that pretty, pretty good. She uh, slept with us. We were on the road trip and so we stayed in, in little motels along the way and um, she slept in the bed with me and Keith for the next few nights. And, and that was okay. Anyways, after that, I, went, I was like super paranoid of cars. Like I was, I would walk around like if I was by myself and I was just looking at cars, I was like, no. <laughs> and it was like that for a while, but I'm pretty good with it now. It's not, it's been years since then. So that's not really like a, a big problem or anything. You know, we laugh about it today. I tell her, hey, I'll run you guys over. If you don't believe me, ask Kate. But you know, the reality is, is we came very close to to losing a child because of my negligence, my ignorance, my stupidness, stupidness. And, and uh, I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but that's what happened. And, and uh, we didn't make video of that at the time. We, we didn't tell that story, but we're telling it now. I know a lot of people who have lost their ch children in accidents, it's horrible. Our hearts go out to them. And uh, we just wanted to tell that story to, you know, let's slow down out there. Let's enjoy those children. Don't be if you're the kind of guy that I used to be, don't don't be anxious. Don't be ready to go. Let's get going. Get in the car, kids. Let's go. Don't don't be that guy. Be be a be a kinder, softer, more patient guy. That's always always caring and always thoughtful. But uh, that's the story of how I ran over my daughter and nearly killed her. And uh, uh, that's the most scariest thing that's happened to us since we started sailing. That is literally the most scariest thing that has happened to us since we started sailing. So uh, anyway, that's that. Our next scariest time was just months before, the same year, the same child, another accident on land. I'm beginning to think Kate has nine lives. The day before our Panama Canal crossing, Kate had a terrible accident. Me and Keith were in a taxi headed to town when we got a call that we should come back right away. Kate had fallen out of a tree. Her friend quickly ran for help. And once at the marina office, guests and workers quickly rushed to her side to help out. By the time we made it back, emergency room doctor and marina guest Barry Carey had splinted her right wrist and wrapped the left one, thinking both might be broken. Some gracious military personnel escorted me and Kate to the Cologne Hospital. Yeah. I fell out of a tree. I was trying to get out of the ants off of me. The branch, I put my hand on the branch and it broke. Oh gosh. The doctor arrived promptly, and although the language difference was a bit of a struggle, I was pleasantly impressed with the hospital staff and urgency of my little girl's situation. One of my wrists are broken. That one's broken for sure. And then this one might be broken. And he thinks that one's probably broken too. I don't know. He's going to do x-rays on the head and the neck it, and um, the wrist. After determining that her head and neck were fine, but the right wrist was broken, they took her to the operating room and set the bones and put on a cast. I love you, Kate. How was surgery? I didn't feel a thing. You didn't feel a thing? No, I was sound asleep. Took a nice little nap, huh? Good deal. Just sleep there. He made this little sign for Kate that says, I love you. And she 
show us your bed. What did your brother do for your bed? He... They usually share and have a divider in the middle, but he spread her covers out so that she could have the whole bed tonight. So, so I could have up. room for my arm. Aww, what a sweet brother. Okay, what am I going to do to brush my teeth? Yeah, I'm going to brush them for you. <laughs> So we're gonna go through the canal today. It's Wednesday and Kate is all better. Not that much. Well, she broke her uh, wrist a little bit. They set the bone and put a cast on it. Did x-rays of her neck and everything because she landed on her head. It could have been so much worse. We're just so my head's strong. thankful and blessed that she is fine. Ben, however, woke up with 102 fever. I don't know why, so he's resting. And um, our line handler is here. We've got the... Uh, the fender's ready to go. He brought lines and fenders. And so we're gonna cross the canal in a few hours or go through the first lock and stay on the lake for the night and then get up in the morning and continue on. And this is my very first bone ever broken. Our very first bone broken. And it was in Panama. Yep. So anyway, wish us luck.